next speaker is Chan Yong Park from this, and he'll talk about holographic RG flow triggered by a classical margin operator. Please start. <coughs> okay, so uh, first. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me to this nice workshop. So today I'm going to talk about holographic RG flow triggered uh, by a crash core marginal operator. So I'm uh, interested in the, some RG flow uh, caused by, so in the, uh, so especially uh, I'm interested in the, some RG deformation caused by some gluon condensation in QCD. <laughs> so the goal of this work is to describe such kind of long condensation <clears throat> uh, in a holographic uh, way. So this is a uh, work based on the uh, some my some recent uh, work. Okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, the outline. So I first briefly explain the some basic concept of the algebra in Q, uh, quantum field theory. And I explain how we can describe the some algebra in holographic model, and I apply the the holographic description to the Coulomb condensate, and then I finish it this work with some concluding remarks. <laughs> okay, so what is the algebra? Algebra is a uh, uh, so depending some physical quantity depending on the energy scale is changed. So if the energy scale we observe in the some system is changing, then the physical property also changes. So in conformal theory case, we are interested in the some ADA shape correspondence. So uh so one of the uh aspects is conformal theory. So conformal theory is uh, some theory which has uh, some scaling symmetry. So in that case so there's a no energy scale dependence. So this uh, uh, become clear when you consider some beta function of the interaction. So this beta function is a zero is a one of the uh, sub consequence of the conformal field theory. So if there's a, a vanishing beta function, then we can apply the ADA shift correspondence. So in that case, the isometry of the ADA space is equivalent to the component field theory uh, uh, symmetry of the some dual field theory. So component, uh, yeah. So we know that uh, some exact relation between the ADA space and component field theory. For example, uh, the ADA five times S five is a dual of the n equal four super young mere theory. And also we know that another example, so any uh A that's four times S seven is a dual of the ABJM theory. So such kind of theory has uh, many some super symmetry, but if we are applying the such kind of relations, A that shaped correspondence to the some real physics, then so unfortunately real physics has no super symmetry. <laughs> so we are uh, applying some ADA shift correspondence. Yeah, so to apply the ADA shift correspondence to real physics, so we need to generalize the concept of the ADA shift correspondence to non conformal field theory. So, one way is, yeah, so in a, a ADA shift correspondence case, usually ADA space, uh, so if we consider some D dimensional conformal field theory, then each dual gravity is a d plus one dimensional theory. So usually gravity theory has one extra dimension. <laughs> so to understanding this relation, we first specify what's the, the uh, some extra dimension in gravity theory. So usually, uh, so we uh, interpret the uh, radial direction of the ADA space as a uh, some uh, energy scale of the uh, dual conformal field theory. Okay, so this is the uh, ADS case, but we are uh, interested in the non-conformal field theory. So if uh, there is some conformal field theory, and if we adding some uh, some some operator, which is not conformal, then so usually the conformal theory is the deformed. So it makes uh, some non-trivial algebra. So there's the, some uh, basic uh, setup of this uh, work. 
So yeah. So in, let's consider for uh, some compo uh, some quantum field theory side. So we consider some component field theory. We adding those kind of deformation. So in this case. Uh, so O is the operator and lambda is uh, some coupling constant. So usually in gravity theory, so this coupling or so operator is uh, re uh, interpret as uh, some bulk field. <laughs> so in this case, if so, we assume that the conformal dimension of this operator is given by delta. Then so coupling. Because this uh, the action should be scale invariant, uh, yeah. So scale invariant. So uh, the the uh, mu d minus delta is uh, corresponded to some scaling dimension of the coupling. So we are interested in the uh, change of the scaling uh, uh, scaling dimension of uh, coupling constant. So if so here mu is the some. Uh, Energy scale, we are observing the some system. So energy scale changes, then usually coupling constant uh transform like this. And the operator is uh transform like that. So if the operator has a conformal dimension delta. So this is uh uh the classical or uh, some true level uh some scaling behavior. So we call that is uh some classical. Uh, scaling uh, behavior. <laughs> okay, so in this case, so using this one, the action is a uh, still scale invariant. So in this case, the beta function is uh, defined by the uh, scale dependence of the coupling constant. So uh, so this is the definition of the beta function. So applying this scaling behavior to beta function, we obtain this relation. So this is the uh, some scaling uh, of the some coupling constant. <laughs> so using this one, we can uh, so classify the deformation operator into a three of part. So one is the relevant operator. So if delta is a smaller than uh, the dimension of the uh, field theory, so this is the, the dimension of of the space time, we define the some uh, field theory. So if conformal dimension is uh, smaller than the dimension, then we call such operator is a relevant operator. So relevant operator usually uh, does not give any impact in the UV region, but IR region, the so relevant operator gives rise a significant impact to the theory. So the relevant op uh, operator is a uh, uh, change the UV shift to uh, perfectly different some IR theory. So if D is the same as delta, then we call that is some marginal operator. The marginal operator is a simply beta function is a zero. So at classical level, if you uh, deform the safety by a marginal operator, then the theory is uh, still conformal. A relevant operator is opposite to the relevant. So irrelevant operator gives rise to some significant impact uh, on the some UV theory. But IR region, the irrelevant deformation operator's impact is a drop. So if we consider some gluon condensation in QCD, so gluon <laughs> condensation usually conformal dimension four. In four-dimensional QCD, so gluon condensation is a uh, marginal, classically marginal. So that means, so gluon condensation uh, does not give uh, some, so does give, uh, gives rise to trivial beta function. So because there is no beta function, another property of the, uh, so that means the theory is a conformal classically. So conformal means a trace of the stress tensor is a zero. So that's another <coughs> uh, definition of the uh, conformal field uh, theory. So classically, but if we, uh, so there is a story of the classical theory. But if you consider some more quantum correction, then so usually the beta function also uh, has no trivial quantum correction. Then the, this is the first part and the, the 
beta q. So this is the quantum correction. So quantum correction is changing the property of the uh, operator. For example, even the classical marginal operator case, there's a no classical beta function. But if uh, the quantum correction is uh, negative, then so this operator, so marginal operator is changed to the relevant operator. So in that case, we call this operator is a marginally relevant operator. But if quantum correction does not give non-trivial beta function, then the theory is a truly marginal. So that means even uh, with the quantum correction, the theory is a uh, uh, conformal. So which is independent of the the scale. So if the beta function, uh, uh, so quantum correction gives rise positive beta function, then the marginal uh, operator is a change to the marginally irrelevant operator. So, so this is a uh, some story. If we consider more some quantum corrections. Okay, so uh, based on this one in uh, QCD, so this is a four-dimensional theory. So we know that QCD is asymptotically free. So that means in the UV, uh, so extremely UV region, the QCD have, uh, has uh, some vanishing beta function. So QCD must be conformal in the uh, UV limit. So that means classically, the uh, stress tensor must be zero. So that is a classical story. But if you consider some gluon condensation, then the quantum effect of the gluon condensation gives rise to non-trivial quantum uh, beta function. So this is uh, known so at the one loop, the gluon condensation gives rise some non-trivial uh, beta function. So due to that, so at the one loop, the trace of uh, the QCD is uh, not zero. So it is proportional to the gluon condensation. So this is a quantum effect. <laughs> So this is called some trace anomaly in QCD, so caused by some gluon condensation. So now we want to describe the, uh, the, this uh, RG pro caused by classical marginal operator in a holographic model. Okay, so now we describe the, some uh, holographic model. So because the gluon condensation is a, a scalar operator, so we introduced uh, some scalar field in dual gravity theory. In general, we can also consider some mass of that scalar field. <laughs> so in this case, so in the, uh, yeah, so this is, a, there is a, some uh, negative cosmological constant. The theory is uh, uh, what? So we first uh, assume that some uh, ADS space, and then we put uh, some uh, massive scalar field. Then the gravitational back direction of the, uh, the massive scalar field is a change the background geometry. <laughs> so in this case, so, uh, sorry. So in the, uh, yeah, so here, I using the this types of uh, metrics, so here, so G equals zero corresponds to boundary. So near the boundary, the scalar field equation uh, gives rise to these types of perturbative solution. So this perturbative solution, from the, this perturbative solution, we can easily read the uh, conformal dimension of the, uh, the dual operator of the bulk scalar field. For example, as I mentioned before, the radial coordinate of the AD space corresponds to energy scale of the dual theory. So G plays the role of the uh, energy scale. So the power of the uh, radial coordinate corresponds to some uh, conformal dimension of the dual operator of pi. So this is a dual, uh, the dimension of the, this dual operator and uh, four minus delta corresponds to uh, we usually we uh, identify C1 as a source, or uh, we can also uh, <laughs> call it uh, what some coupling constant. So this is the relation between the some bulk mass and uh, some 
conformal dimension of the dual operator. But this description is a uh, uh, classical description. So in this case, uh, yeah. So depending on the bulk mass, we can uh, classify the dual operator as a relevant marginal and, uh, sorry, this is a relevant, relevant operator. So, okay, so this uh, is the, some, uh, the traditional interpretation. So usually when you describe this one, we uh, use some, uh, some second order, uh, so we can derive the second order differential equation from this uh, gravitational action. But uh, here, so, uh, bulk equation is a second order, but so the goal of this work is uh, to describe the RG pro. So RG pro is uh, usually given by some post order differential equation. So this uh, second order differential equation uh, is not a convenience to describe the RG pro. So we use the, some different uh, technique. So we can use Hamilton Jacobi formalism. So Hamilton Jacobi description gives rise the post order differential equation. So under this uh, Hamilton Jacobi on, uh, formulation, we can identify the Hamilton Jacobi, uh, so more precisely, the some constraint appearing in the Hamilton Jacobi formulation as uh, what? As some education of the dual field theory. So uh, briefly uh, speaking, the uh, Hamilton Jacobi formalism use some uh, ADM decomposition. So we decompose the radial coordinate and the boundary coordinate. And then we rewrite the gravitational action using this one. We can uh, rewrite uh, some uh, four dimensional, I mean, sorry, so boundary uh, quantity, okay? So, so this is the intrinsic part of the four dimension, and this is the so intrinsic curvature defined at the boundary. So using this formula, uh, intrinsic curvature is defined this one. So here I assume that the uh, Poincaré AD space. So in that case, the intrinsic curvature of the boundary space is uh, uh, zero because the boundary space is uh, simply flat space. So in uh, from this equation, so here, so we use the boundary metric, then we can define the canonical momentum of the boundary metric. So this pi mu nu corresponds to the canonical momentum of the boundary metric, and pi pi is the canonical momentum of the bulk scalar field. Then, so this action can be rewritten as a, uh, this form. So this is the first order of uh, formulation. So here, n is correspond to left function. So left function is the uh, non-dynamical. So, so the coefficient of the, yeah, so this, uh, the left function plays the role of the Lagrange multiplier. So h correspond to, to some, uh, the, uh, what, the constraint. <laughs> so this is, uh, uh, so because the left function is a time direction, so this uh, H corresponds to some Hamiltonian of the uh, dual system. So if certain uh, quantity, so Hamiltonian is a generator of the, so, um, I'm sorry, so in this case, uh, uh, so time is a radial coordinate. So we, uh, yeah, interpret the radial coordinate as a time. So here, so this H is the uh, the Hamiltonian in the radial directions. So, so due to the uh, some symmetry in time direction, so this Hamiltonian is a general uh, generator of the some uh, what time translation. So if some quantity related to uh, this one, this generator, then so those two quantity are uh, kg equivalent one. So this is uh, related to R transformation of the dual quantum field theory. So yeah, so bearing this one, so usually uh, using the Hamilton-Jacobi formulation, 
So this is a, a bulk equation, but bearing this action, and we impose own share uh, condition, then only the boundary terms uh, remain. So this boundary term can be identified with the what the some generic functional of the dual quantum field theory. So in this case, the variation with respect to boundary metric and bulk field correspond to some canonical momentum. So this is a, a, a typical structure of the uh, hamilton jacobi formulation. So this one, delta SB, is uh, uh, considered as uh, some uh, this uh, partition function. So this is uh, at the boundary point. So this SB contains all uh, full quantum uh, corrections. So this so this in this case, uh, this uh, quantity corresponds to full partition function. So bearing this partition function with respect to some uh, coupling, then or source, then we can obtain the subbab of the operator. So this action, so this uh, partition function should be uh, scale independent. So so that uh, scale in independence uh, gives rise to some RG equation. Although the action, the uh, generic function is a scale independent, but the quantity, so a component of this uh, generative functional can depend on the scale. So, so this uh, variation with respect to uh, scale, it gives rise to uh, this relation. So this is a typical uh, RG equation of the quantum field theory. So only different thing is in quantum field theory, usually we did not consider the variation of the uh, metric. But here I consider uh, some boundary metric as uh, some coupling constant. So this technique is uh, used to explain the some conformal anomaly in uh, some quantum uh, theory. <laughs> okay, so that is the uh, how we can drive the RG equation from the holotropic point of view. Now we apply that holotropic technique, the uh, QCD. In Coulomb condensation, as I mentioned before, at the one loop, the trace anomaly is up here. Okay. So here, so because we consider some uh, what? So Coulomb condensation. So this description is a, uh, this trace anomaly described by some tube coupling. Okay. Now we describe that things. So we first assume that background is the AD space and we uh, consider the Coulomb condensation. So usually Coulomb condensation, this is a trace F square corresponding to Coulomb condensation. And one of the four uh, Jiangmin square is a, a coupling. So we identify this coupling with the bulk field phi. Then, so we multiply uh, NC. Then, so this bulk field is a proportional to the one over NC times uh, one over N, uh, sorry, NC over tube coupling. So there is, uh, so inverse tube coupling corresponds to some bulk of field in some, in our model. <laughs> so, so in the, uh, here, so this, uh, trace anomaly described by some tube coupling, but so there is uh, some relation between the tube, uh, tube coupling and the bulk of fields. We also rewrite. This beta, so beta function of the phi in terms of beta function of the tube coupling. So, okay, so this is of some beta function. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I uh, skipped many, some physical detail. So in this model, so if there is a no mass to make uh, some Coulomb condensation, uh, describe the Coulomb condensation, we put the bulk mass so is M. So then the dual uh, operator of the bulk field it become classically marginal. So in that case, we know that the exact solution, so analytic solution. So using this solution, so we can determine this uh, beta function, and 
Also, we can calculate the generating functional and building the that generate functional with the uh, coupling. Then we can also uh, calculate the map of the dual operator. So in this case, verify from the some uh, known dynamic solution is uh, given by so this form and the uh, uh, path of the gluon condensation is given by this one. So in terms of the tupling, uh, tube coupling, the beta lambda is proportional to the uh, minus lambda and gluon condensation is a proportional to the minus one of lambda, okay? So this is, uh, yeah, three level, it's uh, trivially zero. So this quantity is uh, coming from the quantum correction. So using that one, you can calculate the trace of the uh, stress tensor, then we obtain uh, distillation. So in the uh, near the UV fixed point. So in terms of the tube coupling and the gravitational, uh, sorry, the BAB of the Coulomb condensation, we can find uh, this relation. So this is a holographic result. So this is a, yeah, equivalent to the, some, uh, well, some trace anomaly in QCD. So also we can calculate the higher loop uh, corrections. So this is the uh, the work. So uh, so here I just consider some uh, marginal some marginal operator. So we can apply the same technique to the some relevant uh, operator. Also. We can uh, describe such kind of uh, relevant deformation to the some condensed matter physics. So that is the uh, the, the the goal of my future work. Okay, thanks for your attention. Thank you for your talk. Oh, other question or. Yeah. Can you compare with the other study for the Cologne condensation? Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. So there, they, uh, yeah. So there are several some work describing uh, describe this uh, some Cologne condensation, but in that case, yeah, they obtained uh, some similar uh, result, but uh, the problem is there is a uh, no. Uh, concrete or uh, manifest uh, description of the RG. I mean, just the non-holographic work, I mean. Oh, non-holographic yeah. work. Oh, sorry, I don't know. I, I see the justice. <laughs> so what do you calculate, right? Oh, yeah. Do you yeah. want to compare with some latest let data or yeah. some other right. RG? Yeah, yeah, okay. right. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I saw the, some several papers, but I didn't fully understand that they so I just uh get uh so used as some the known uh vision. Yeah. So are there questions or other questions? So online? Ah uh, yeah, so uh, I have a question. Okay. Uh, you said the Q C D is UV three. Yeah. And then how about the uh model for in the other station model is the boundary theory, UV free or? Oh, uh, yeah, so this is a UV free because, uh, so I first assume that, uh, background day day space. And then I, uh, put up some, uh, deformation, uh, bulk operator. So that is the marginally relevant. So that means, so you, uh, so asymptotic geometry is a still a day space. So the, in the asymptotic a day, uh, means, the it's a, some kind of UV fixed point of the dual uh, component bit, dual theory. So in that sense, th so there is also the asymptotic free. But if you're adding the some uh what uh dilator, then uh, it's not easy to make uh, some use asymptotic uh, free theory. Yeah, you put the some highly non-trivial uh oh, sorry potential for that dilator. So anyway, so this is asymptotic. So asymptotic means the it allows the UV fixed point. So that means it's a UV free. So but uh, I think in QCD, if we change the dimension, space time dimension or color, maybe 
UV uh, I think UV free property. Sorry, UV. So I think if we change the space time dimension or wow. cut out in QCD, I think the property of UV change. So oh yeah, yeah. So, so even in this case, if we consider a three dimensional QCD, then Coulomb condensation plays the role of the irrelevant place. So there's the yeah. So you check the some dimension then. So if we change the some. Okay, so in the uh sorry. Yeah, so here, so this is the dimension of the the uh space time. So that is the also crucially uh important to determine that's the property of the dual operator. Yeah, so here I just focus on the four dimensional quantum space Thank you. Um, the, uh, the so in your formulation, you are distinguishing the um, learning scale mu yeah. uh, from the radial coordinate of uh, ADS. Uh, 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 right? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, let's see, I, I, uh, so uh, let's see. Yeah, so here, uh, so radial coordinate is Y. And e to the a, so this is the warping pack of, uh, of the boundary, uh, metric. So e to the a identified with the, some, uh, energy scale of the dual, uh, quantum field theory. So because here, uh, okay, so metric, uh, yeah, so using this one, uh, this is uh, called normal coordinate. So this is the, uh, uh, important. So, the uh, component field theory of the dual field theory is, uh, uh, is identified with the translation in this normal no, uh, I mean, that it's okay that to relate, uh, yeah. uh, but the question is whether mu and y is related? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, mu is uh, given by e to the a y. Uh, yeah. Then I, I regard it the same. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, in this, yeah. So is there another question? No? And then, oh, so. Oh, oh yeah. What is the expression for bulk curvature? Bulk curvature. Uh... This one. So this is uh in the you mean uh in the Hamilton Jacobi formulation. So uh five dimensional curvature scalar can be written as a uh, uh, this form. Well, I mean you obtain the salt uh, using the analytic solution. Do you have expression in terms of the analytic function? Oh yeah, you can also calculate that one. Yeah. Uh, or I didn't. So uh sorry. So uh, here I didn't write in. Yeah, so uh, you can obtain. Uh, so there are two ways. So you can solving this second order differential equation, you obtain this solution. Also, in the Hamilton Jacobi formulation, so we can uh, so writing uh, this one, so you can calculate the exchange coverture, and from this action you obtain this one. So connecting. That you can obtain the some uh, post order differential equation. So, coupled post order differential equation, solving that equation, you can also obtain the exactly the same solution. So my question is that what is the IR behavior of the bulk coverage? Oh, yeah. So, in this case, IR coverage is uh, uh, diverse. So, uh, yeah. So, here I didn't consider some IR pictures. I just Focus on the some uh, physics UV physics near the UV physics point. So this uh, dual theory is not IR incomplete. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So is there another question? No question. Then let's thank the speaker again. Okay. Thank you.